Hello. I, have you been dragging this week? Like, I've been this week. I've just been dragging. And, like, I've talked to a lot of people who are, who are dragging through this week as well. Not that we're not getting work done. Just that, like, it takes an extra little bit of motivation to get to get going on stuff. I will say, though, that that's been happening to me, like, when I'm trying to get work done. But one of the most beneficial things this week has been meeting with people one-on-one. -on -one. I've had the chance to meet with quite a few folks this week, which has been great. And now here I am with you. So my energy level is picking up bit by bit. I hope for your sake that, that us getting to hang out together helps pick up your energy level as well. But yeah, it's just been a rough week. I don't know if it's like political intrigue or what it is, but all that being said, if you've been having a hard time getting going this week, you're not alone. I'm experiencing the same thing, and I've talked to quite a few other people who are as well. But even though we we may have been having a hard time getting going, there's been a lot of news happening this week. Some broke late last week after I'd recorded the episode, but the big, big company to talk about this week is Agility Robotics. If you're not familiar with Agility Robotics, they're an Oregon State spin-out, uh, you know, uh, bipedal robots that do warehousing kind of tasks, humanoid-esque robots that ideally one day will get to work alongside humans, like side by side kind of thing. And that's what they're working on. Uh, several big stories for Agility Robotics this week. One, their bipedal robot Digit made the cover of Time Magazine this week. You know, no big deal. Just just Time Magazine for people <laughs> who still read magazines. But it was uh, Inventions of the Year for 2024. Digit was there holding, uh, you know, a case or a thing like, like Digit does. And so that was a big deal. They were highlighted there. Uh, one of Keen's hiking boots also made that issue. So a couple of Oregon companies in that issue. But uh, the other thing, uh, Peggy Johnson, who is the CEO of Agility Robotics, was on stage at Wall Street Journal's Tech Live event sharing information about what they're doing and what the future of Agility Robotics looks like. And I think Digit it was on stage with them there too. Like Digit, I think folded some laundry or like did some laundry sorting or something along that line. You know, but it was on stage, so Digit's getting some good airtime for sure. And then finally, the story that broke late last week, after I had already recorded the episode, but I wanted to capture it here: Agility Robotics, and this is rumor mill, but like equally as large as these other two news items, Agility Robotics appears to be raising another round and the valuation of the company uh, uh, which they're raising puts them in unicorn status. So it's been a while since Oregon has had a unicorn level company and it appears that Agility Robotics could be that next unicorn uh, again, this is all rumor mill. I will substantiate and, and validate that should that become actual news. But just, you know, put, the, put that in your back pocket that Agility Robotics may be a unicorn robot company or a robot unicorn company or what. They'll be a unicorn and there'll be a robots involved. So that's big news for the state and, and, and big news for Oregon State. Here's my pitch to you. Subscribe. That's it. That's the pitch. Just subscribe and I'll send you news every single week about startups, about pitch events, about all the things in the Portland startup community. Speaking of Oregon State, they have other big news. They have been named as one of the few universities, organizations recognized by the National Science Foundation for part of a, a huge grant outlay 
Oregon State secured two point five five million dollars. So if you round up, it's two point six million dollars that Oregon State managed to secure. That money will go to the campus to help with their Oregon State Advantage Accelerator program, help fund some of that. You know, the grant funding is always nice for those kind of programs and for the university. As I said in my blog post, the university's gotten some some private investment from a couple of alums, uh, you know, founded a, a little little company that, that makes processors and things called NVIDIA. Jensen Huang and, and his wife, uh, both OSU alums, who have who've contributed quite a quite a bit to <laughs> Oregon State to help them build out the campus and 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 curriculum and academics and those kind of things. So they have the private funding, but now they also have some of this public funding from the federal government, National Science Foundation, providing them two point. Five five million dollars to help fund some of their activity around innovation and entrepreneurship. So can't wait to see what that does and how that continues to bolster Oregon State, which not only has exciting things going in Corvallis, but also has exciting things going in Bend. So their Bend Cascades campus is quite compelling and growing and some really interesting stuff happening there too. So not to discount that the Ducks were named number one in the nation in the whole football thing, but Oregon State's got some stuff going too. So it's a good year to be an Oregon University. Keep an eye on both of them. One of my favorite things about getting to do the type of work that I get to do is that I get to talk to a lot of different people. Uh, you know, I get a lot of like inbound queries and questions and like there was this thing starting to happen where people are like hey have you heard this company they're they're doing this thing and uh and then i was at uh you know i got to, to have a happy hour and the person was like oh we're working with this company who's doing this thing and i was like oh yeah i've heard of them i've been talking about them this week and then <laughs> you know i got home from the happy hour and was sitting down to do some more work and and lo and behold i had an email from malia spencer at the portland business journal well it wasn't from her specifically like it was the portland business journal sending me something and it was a story that malia had written about this company that i had just been talking about and had heard quite a bit about recently that company in case you're wondering is called trunk node and a, a trunk node is a new a relatively new startup but the uh, the the founder is an alum of like nike and intel and appsci and like has some chops so it's really interesting to kind of watch the not only a new company being formed by somebody with significant experience both in corporate and the startup world but also just to, to hear that buzz building like it's really interesting to hear from a variety of different folks about the same company this used to happen a lot back in the you know 2010 time period the beginning of mobile the cloud all those kind of things you know people would be like have you heard of this company did you hear what they're doing and this is super interesting have you met this founder and uh that would happen with quite a few companies back then and it's it, it's starting to happen again which i think is a really good sign um you know there have been a few companies not, throughout the the last few months where people are like hey have you talked to so-and-so they're doing this thing and that is always a good sign to me so trunk node uh just new on the scene keep an eye on them they're kind of like they weren't in stealth per se but they're kind of starting to come out of 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 not hiding but they're starting to get some recognition and uh good one to keep an eye on they're working on the the stuff for the ai folks which is a good good place to be these days so keep an eye on trunk node see what they're doing they are rumored to be raising so there could be an announcement of fundraising 
here soon, not in the too distant future. So all that being said, it's just really nice to see like the, in these companies here and there, like building buzz and people getting excited and like wondering what they're up to and, and feeling like there's some momentum building here in the community. So I, for one, am looking forward to watching Trunk Node and seeing what happens with them. And of course, I will keep you appraised on whatever I learn. Uh, another one that this isn't necessarily even like to the to the true startup -y business kind of phase. This is more like proof of concept. Uh, our friend Devin Gaffney, who I've talked about before with any number of projects, like what I love about Devin is he will crank out the proof of concept things like real quick. He'll get it. He'll get an idea. He's like, I think I can build this thing and he'll build it and he'll put it out there. And he's like, is this even a thing? Why don't you try this? Why don't you see if it works? And so his latest in that regard is a tool called Salal. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's S-A-L-A-L. Salal, Salal. I don't know. But anyway, this tool allows you to hook up your GitHub repositories to it and then have a natural language, natural common English, plain English conversation with your GitHub repositories. So for me, <laughs> I haven't actually written code since the days of basic, maybe visual basic, uh, action script, for Flash, well, of course, HTML and some PHP and that kind of thing. But anyway, wh whatever. <laughs> I have not written code for a very, very long time. So on GitHub, I don't post code, but I do use GitHub for sharing content. You know, like I've got the, the Portland startup docs that are like here, are all the co-working spaces and events and, and things and VCs and, and all that stuff that's on GitHub. So like you can contribute to it. The community can contribute to it. Uh, the Pi cookbook, which is a, a, an open source guide to building and running a startup accelerator. Like I have that on GitHub, but it's very much content based. So anyway, I can hook up Salal to that and I have, and then I can just kind of chat with it and say, hey, where did I talk about this thing? Or where were these updates made? Or who else has contributed recently to this project? And it really just makes it a really easy way to interact with GitHub repositories, especially in a day and age where documentation is probably not top of mind for most folks. So if you are a developer and you use GitHub on a regular basis and you're like, hey, I would like to be able to query my GitHub repository and figure out when I use this terminology or this library or this command or what have you, you can do that. You can also talk about the dynamics of the repository or if you're a team with a lot of people contributing to a single repository, this could be a really good way to keep track of what's going on and what's used where and, and all those kind of things. Anyway, just as always with Devin, super interesting idea, really quick on the execution to, to develop the proof of concept. So if you are a GitHub user, regardless of how many repositories you have or how large of a repository you manage, I would recommend taking a test drive with this tool, hooking it up, and, and having a conversation with your GitHub repository to see what's what. Who knows what you might learn. Could be super interesting. And thanks again to Dev Gaffney for releasing yet another super interesting tool that, that is even in the short term, incredibly useful. Okay, talking about the Thai Oregon trifecta. So Thai Oregon, used to run an event called Pitch Oregon. That was an annual event that would draw people from all over and would be like a single event for startup pitches and startup funding. They continued to run that for a while and then they came up with this event called the West Side Pitch 
event, which was really designed for Washington County startups to highlight what was happening out in Washington County, you know, Hillsborough, Beaverton, all those folks were involved in the pitch event, but really just a way to showcase things that were happening west of the West Hills Tunnel. You know, what, what, what's happening out in Washington County? And that's when it dawned on the Thai Oregon folks that they're like, look, we have three counties at our disposal. We have Washington County, we have Multnomah County, and Clackamas County. And so this year they ran, as they have for several years, the West Side Pitch event, which was amazing. Had some good companies pitching there and, and sharing their stories. They ran the Columbia River, Columbia Pitch event, which and the only reason I'm confused is because it wasn't just Multnomah County. It was also Clark County across the river. They hosted it in Vancouver. People from Multnomah County and Clark County could pitch at that event. So that's two. That's two of the counties included. And then now, of course, who's left? Clackamas, one of the, one of the biggest counties around. Clackamas still needs their due. And so they have been planning the Clackamas County pitch event to complete the trifecta and now they've selected the companies they have to pitch at the clackamas county event and i will read them off to you so you know who they are the event's happening november 20th and uh is open to everyone tickets are like super affordable if you're already a member of ty oregon you get a discount on the ticket price but anyway, November 20th is when the pitch event is happening. If you're interested in what's happening in Clackamas County in terms of startups, I encourage you to attend. Here are the companies that will be taking the stage. Alpha Speech, Art Clever, Care Space, Everfull, and Fanwagon, which uh, I'm, I'm sure I've mentioned Fanwagon several times before. They're like a demolitious winner. They'll be taking the state they'll they'll pitch at the clackamas event and, and then they'll be taking the stage at, at demolitious champion of champions event in december so fan wagon getting their pitch practice in and their 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 pitch competitions in so again alpha speech art clever care space everfull fan wagon the five companies who will be taking the stage at clackamas county pitch and the, I believe it's taking place at uh, Clackamas Community College, November 20th. If you're interested in what's happening in Clackamas County, please attend. That pitch event should be a good networking event aside from the pitches. And thanks again to Ty Oregon for pulling this together. It's always nice to see the variety of companies that are being built in the three counties that comprise the Portland Metro at four. Okay, four, because Clark County, I don't want to discount Clark County. The many counties that comprise the Portland metropolitan area. Okay, speaking of pitching, uh, yeah, you know, you're maybe you're working on a startup and it wasn't selected for any of those Thai events. You haven't had a chance to pitch it, but you think you're right there. You think you've got the chance to pitch, and maybe that startup deserves to be on a global stage. Well, I hope you have a few minutes available this weekend because applications for South by Southwest pitch are due on Sunday. So if you're not familiar with South by Southwest or South by Southwest pitch, South by Southwest annual event happens in Austin, Texas in March. Uh, started out as as a music festival and then they added like movies and interactive and, and all kinds of things became this regular pilgrimage for startups and the who's who of the tech community to head down to Austin every year and they have a, a startup pitch event associated with that I believe it's like the 17th year or something I've had the opportunity to work with the program for the past you know decade dozen 15 years or so serving as an advisor i get to review the applications and provide my two cents on who i think should be taking the stage but all that being said if you are building something that you think 
could benefit from being on stage at South by Southwest and pitching to the tens of thousands of people who show up to that event every year, I highly encourage you to get your South by Southwest pitch application submitted quickly because it's due Sunday, November 3rd. So it's just southbysouthwest.com slash pitch. I will link it up obviously, but please, if that sounds interesting to you, there's an application fee, but the benefit of it is if you're selected to pitch, like if they're like, yeah, we like your company, we want you on stage, you get two free tickets to South by Southwest. If you're not selected to pitch, they still send you a coupon to get a discount on your ticket prices. So, so all in all, having to pay an application fee will pay off for you in you know one way or another but my hope is that you take the time to submit an application you get selected to go down to south by southwest and we we get to see you on the global stage you know helos out of portland a few years back won the big won the big prize down there they were they were recognized as a, a super interesting footwear company at south by southwest so you it could happen to you but you never know unless you submit your application. So please get that submitted. And if you need some pitch practice, if you're like, yeah, I'll submit it and, and hopefully get selected. But you're like, I don't know if my pitch is quite dialed up. Word around the campfires, they still need people for Demolicious November. And so, you know, that's a good place to practice your pitch. You go to Demolicious November who knows, maybe you win it. And then you get into champion of champions and you're like, Oh, fan wagon. I've heard of you. I'm competing against you at the champion of champions. There's a lot of pitch opportunities here happening. So demolitious. If you feel like you need some practice South by Southwest, get that one in too. And then let's see what happens. I think you can do it. Just submit, just submit your application. What can it hurt? Just, yeah, do that. And I, if you apply to South by Southwest Pitch and you're in my my queue, I look forward to learning more about your company and, and, and hopefully helping you get on stage to present if you've got a super compelling idea. Cool. So that's it for this week. Uh, again, if you're dragging... I get it. I, it's been a hard week. I think part of it might be, I don't know, is there some political thing going on? <laughs> is Portland changing its form of government completely and, and setting up a whole new city council and new mayor? And then, of course, there's new president and, and they, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff going on. So if you're dragging a little, it's understandable. But I hope you hang in there. And I hope that everything goes well for you now that we're in November, we're entering, you know, close to the end of the year. So please hang in there. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work.